We have an enormous uh, cost-cutting pressure. We don't know what's going to happen in the markets. None of us do. We are moving into a new phase for sure. When the markets were stable, I look at the past, I could see to forecast the future perhaps predicted based on my own experience, uh, my talent of my organization. The markets have peaks and valleys, the kind we have today, where regions are growing at 12, 15%, and just 8,000 miles over, you have total collapses, both in a country, in a currency. Then how do you forecast? Can you even forecast? We have an enormous uh, cost-cutting pressure, a pressure to become more efficient. IT budgets are becoming smaller. So what comes to our rescue is uh, grand old AI, artificial intelligence. So people are starting to talk about the velocity of information and how it's increased. The world's not a pyramid, the world's not a vertical, the world has gone network. You have a lot of CEOs walking around their office saying, I need an app, I need I need some offering out there. Technology operates exponentially and there's a network effect to it and our minds operate linearly. Television, the telephone, the mobile phone, Facebook and so forth, and a, it, it trends downward very, very fast because technology is overcoming. It, it, it expands into our lives faster than we can really absorb and digest it. So that's why if it feels overwhelming, yes, it, it is. Because the world is becoming ever more difficult to understand what the future is going to look like, and people need to turn, consumers need to turn to people and say, help me with this because I don't understand this at all. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, will it be like in the Middle Ages, where there were a couple of monks who wrote things down, and that was it, and the rest that was said and happened is just lost for us. Or uh, will we be able to handle this huge amount of data? Data and information is appearing and being created on such a real-time, rapid basis. And if it's starting to affect the markets and the share prices, then how are we going to respond in an equally real-time, proactive way? One of our customers used to say, he or she who owns the data wins, now they say he or she who exploits the data wins. And I, and I believe that's true. So to have automatic recall of your prior experience and to be able to apply that to making a decision in real time at this moment by someone on the front lines is, in, is priceless. So this was actually a measure um, uh, on the national security side where um, I love to say the number, it's 500,000 times faster. <laughs> For instance, in terms of uh, um, defeat of improvised explosive devices, roadside bombs, was, was devastating. Uh, For instance, in Iraq in uh, 2004, up into 2005. And so if you think about the analyst who is trying to read anything and everything potentially to find not the bomb but the bombers and that was the key idea. Um, they were still faced with uh, having massive amounts of possible data. We've connected all the dots so that when you come to ask a question um, we can then easily give you back uh, essentially the targets, the people, the places, the things that that are of interest for you to then go and, and investigate. We create learnings. It's then critical that you take those learnings into markets. CEOs are gonna be walking around saying, I want an app, I want a mobile website, but ev eventually it's going to click that that's just not good enough. What you will need is some way to be able to talk to your consumers and deal with them on the move. When you walk into something like Ted Baker, for example, can I point something on an EPOS system that tells me what I should be selling Neil because of his basket? Neil bought that product last week, what will he buy next week and the week after that? At what point will Neil churn? To read every sentence, remember everything, remember the association of everything to every other thing, the context of the associations, and where you saw that association. The money is predicting the future. So now we want to understand those uh, social networks. This is uh, not structured. You know? There's not a simple model uh, for a social network. One big part of AI machine learning. And uh, to be able to have this huge amount of diverse data that we find in social networking 
and then to understand personalized relationships, personalized catalogs, personalized preferences. Probably wouldn't be able to have a, sort, a memory per person, but we could have group memories, people who have similar interests. But if you can anticipate, uh, particularly uh, whether that's uh, making the buy or the sell or the cash uh, decision. As I believe, and many others, at the core of uh, the information age, the information technology will be to make more value out of the data. It won't be anymore to make more value out of raw material or things that we take out of the earth like metals or oil and then we build cars or phones or computers. Even if you're not sure but you're anticipating what's possible, if you anticipate what's possible you're going to be ahead of the game.